thank you, uh, President Bill and everyone for this opportunity. For all of our guests, I should introduce myself. I'm Monica Smith and I'm the club historian. I'm also uh, the Associate Director for the Lemelson Center for the Study of Invention and Innovation at the Smithsonian. And so I like to give history talks that are about the Washington DC metropolitan area where our club is based. And I've been taking the opportunity to highlight some of the often overlooked um, and undervalued, in my view, uh, members of our community. Um, and today I'm giving a talk about the Native Americans of the Chesapeake Bay region in which we are featured here in DC. Um, this was meant to be given in November as part of Native American History Month, but uh, I wasn't able to give the talk then. And I feel like uh, this is such important history that is so little known in, even in the US that it was worth giving this talk today. So I hope you'll bear with me. Um, I have two slides. I will start with this one and leave it on while I'm talking to give a little of the early history of Native Americans in this area. And then I'm gonna move up to today and talk about the continuing history that's um, very important and really I think under um, uh, not known enough about. So um, most people, including locals, probably don't realize that people had settled here in the Washington DC area around the Anacostia and Potomac rivers um, as early as 9,500 BCE. Chesapeake uh, Indians were native riverine communities uh, and they draw, drew sustenance, as you can imagine, from the rivers and the bay uh, in this area for as much as 10 months of the year. And I'd also like to dispel um, another myth that is often told in uh, American schools. The English were not the first Europeans to quote unquote discover uh, this area. Actually, as early as 1562, the Spanish were here and there's a map maker, Diego Gutierrez, who actually recorded this area on a map, he called the uh, area the Bahia de Santa Maria. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a map of that, but uh, so this area was, was known to Europeans. The Spanish, however, didn't settle here because they didn't find gold. But unfortunately, they did bring with them disease, they depleted resources, they waged assaults on the Native Americans, and even enslaved some of the local Indians, which of course left behind distrust of Europeans in their wake and also started to decimate the population even before the English arrived. So the colonial history we learn in this country is generally that the English were the first to settle here at Jamestown, Virginia in uh, 1607. And when the now famous Captain John Smith sailed up the Potomac River, he actually found 13 American Indian villages and fortified towns along the banks. At the time, there were sort of three major political groups which were vying for power in this area the Susquehannock in Pennsylvania, the Piscataway chiefdom in Southern Maryland, and the Powhatan chiefdom in Virginia and farther south into the Carolinas. The Anacostans were another group that were also documented as the Nantuchak Indians of what is now DC, and they were part of the Piscataway chiefdom. So this Powhatan Confederacy of Indians that greeted the Jamestown settlers in 1607 included tribes from the Carolinas um, to Maryland, Piscataway, often sided with the Powhatan chiefdom, but these are the ones from um, further north even, against the English. And when the Powhatan were defeated in 1646 by the English, um, settlements rapidly expanded. King Charles I of England deeded Piscataway territories to Lord Baltimore, for whom the capital city of, Baltimore, of, of Maryland is named. Uh, and European settlements reached what is DC by 1675. British settlement, of course, followed the usual pattern of expansion. Indians were pushed off lands, treaties and alliances were made and then broken. Frontiersmen pushed into Indian lands and pushed um, out the villages. And then, of course, epidemics of introduced diseases from Europe uh, decimated the indigenous population down to perhaps a tenth of its former number. Although it's difficult to obtain, obtain precise population figures, as you can imagine, scholars estimate that there were about 12,000 Powhatan Indians when Jamestown was settled, and then 100 years later, there was only 1,000 were left, so from 12,000 to 1,000. The Piscataway chiefdom had about 8,500 members at the time of English settlement, but only 300 remained by 1,700. Epidemics were, of course, not the only cause. Wars, loss of land, social upheaval, and disease combined to devastate Native communities. Population losses also weakened their culture. As you can imagine, they, um, oral tradition was very critical for preserving cultural knowledge at the time, um, even for the English who were often illiterate too. Um, when elders died, it was like having entire libraries burned down. 
So by 1700, the English were well settled here, had established plantation economies, mostly for tobacco, which they were shipping back to England. And as they claimed those river pathways, of course, that pushed the Indians back. And so backcountry Indians became more prominent, but the ones on the river started to disappear. Um, some Native Americans were actually sold into slavery into the Caribbean. Um, so this whole area was kind of cleaned out. <clears throat> but it's the racial laws which start in the 1670s that really start to uh, push the disappearance of Indians. Um, some of you who live here may have heard of Bacon's Rebellion, where white indentured servants united with black slaves actually to um, rise against the Virginia governor and the elite to try to drive Indians out of the area. They even attacked the friendly Pamunkey and Mataponi tribes. This um, rebellion actually led to the slave codes of Virginia of 1705, which effectively embedded white supremacy into law and drew, drove a wedge between whites and blacks who had actually been working often together in the fields of the tobacco plantations in the area to dominate American social dynamics. Now, the Patan, Matapani and Pamunkey, sorry, um, mostly kept to themselves. They isolated themselves as much as possible, even from other Virginia tribes. But interestingly, they have a 1677 treaty with the governor of Virginia, which they still honor. They bring a tribute to the governor every year. Um, on the eastern side of the Chesapeake, the Nantuchoke mostly fled into Delaware, while the remaining Maryland tribes consolidated under the name Piscataway and around 1700 moved to Southern Pennsylvania. There they came under the protection of the Iroquois Indians where they became known as the Conoy. By the end of the 18th century, their official numbers had been reduced to 320 persons. So let's fast forward to today. There are still living and very active Native American communities in this area. This is just a photo of some of those. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not sure if you're seeing all this. Um, so um, one thing that happened <clears throat> that Virginians are aware of is there was a Racial Integrity Act of 1924, which was pushed forward by white supremacist, Walter Ashby Plecker, which made it illegal to be Indian. He decreed that Virginia Amer Indians had so intermarried, mostly with blacks, that they no longer existed. He actually instructed registrars at the Bureau of Vital Statistics to go through birth certificates and cross out Indian and write in colored. Further, the law also expanded Virginia's ban on interracial marriage. <clears throat> now, some of you may know that Virginia's ban on interracial marriage would not be overturned until 1967, when the US Supreme Court ruled in Loving versus Virginia. Um, interestingly, Mildred Loving, who is often identified as black, was also Rappahannock Indian. So today there are roughly 4,163 American Indians in present day Washington, DC, that's according to the census. As of January 2018, the Pamunkey, Rappahannock and Upper Mattapani tribes have received federal recognition. <clears throat> according to the officials at the National Museum of the American Indian, there are no living Anacostans left. They were probably adopted into the Piscataway people. In Virginia, there are 11 tribes that have achieved, achieved state recognition. Maryland has formally recognized three, and uh, there's about 87,000 in Virginia and 62,000 Native Americans in Maryland, um, which is about 1% of each state's population. So just to end, you know, I think it's always important to remember these are living, breathing, dynamic um, cultures um, that are in our own backyards, and we probably are friends and neighbors with them. Um, I know my neighbor is uh, part Cherokee and uh, part Black. And she's very proud of her Native American heritage. So in the 21st century, they live in the same ways as their non-Indian neighbors, but they continue certain practices, such as hunting, farming, and cultural arts that draw on the ancestral traditions. The Pamunkey people have particularly tried to keep a tradition of pottery making. Of course, they've all tried to also maintain oral traditions and stories and other teachings so that they can teach their children about unique Native ways of relating to the natural world. So with that, I will stop. But that wasn't too long. And I hope that everyone learned a little something about the Native Americans in our area. Thank you.